I feel it necessary to highlight this section of the spoiler warning. Though Miss Jen is super tempted to. What did she say? Spill the tea? Oh no. Here we go again. You're going to make a scene. Please calm down, Miss Jen. I've got your scene right here, Phil. I'm so done with you. My favorite Strider, bro. Dirk was named by Homestuck's creator, Andrew Hussey, since, by the time this Strider was formally introduced, reader suggestions had been disabled for almost two years. A dirk is a type of a long dagger associated with the early modern era of Scotland. Depending on the year, it was either spelled D-I-R-K or D-O-R-K. Lol, dork strider. In Scotland, the dirk was a symbol of an honored Highland warrior. The steel of their blades were considered holy enough to the point that oaths were sworn on them. According to Dale Sego, writer of The Weapons and Fighting Methods of the Highland Scots, a study in the historical swordsmanship and warfare practices of the Scottish Highlanders, if in Japan the katana was the soul of the samurai, in Scotland the dirk was the heart of the Highlander. I can't make this up! Coincidentally, dirks were also favored by sailors and naval officers, especially the Japanese. I mean, Dirk is an otaku, and he is surrounded by water all the time. In fact, Dirk, in his waterlocked state, is connected to other aspects of his character. Notably, when Dirk's name is revealed on his placard, Hussey's narration states that the last two letters are diluvial symbols. The word diluvial is a term referring to floods, especially the biblical flood from the book of Genesis, where the entire world is flooded due to the immense sin of the people. The only survivors were Noah, his family, and at least two of every kind of air-breathing animal in order to repopulate the earth. The survivors of this flood boarding a big boat called the Ark. You get it? Because of RK? It sounds like ARK, and autoresponder is AR. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll stop. Continuing with the flooded civilization, Dirk is also connected more prominently with myths of Atlantis, having songs and background items referencing it. Atlantis is a fabled city that, according to Plato, was submerged underwater from a flood caused by their own hubris because they were just so good at naval combat that they fell out of favor with the gods. Plato really hated naval power because, for some reason, it went against his idea of utopia, or the perfect world. Because of this, Atlantis served as an inspiration for similar utopian stories. But also, due to misinterpretation of the text by amateur scholars, many were led to believe that Atlantis was a real lost island. Because of this, the word Atlantis is a byword in the modern scientific community, referencing to any and all supposed prehistoric lost civilizations. Speaking of the Lost Empire, Atlantis is mentioned briefly in another one of Plato's works. Plato's dialogue, Timaeus, is composed mostly of one giant monologue from the titular character. Timaeus. In his monologue, Timaeus talks about the Earth, what the universe was made for, the god figure known as the Demiurge, the elements of the Earth as geometric shapes, and an extensive look at the souls of humanity and of the Earth. Listen, this video is long enough. If I started talking about all the philosophy in there, we'd be here for a while. So, Dirk's pester chum handle, Timaeus Testified, can mean that what Timaeus talked about is testified, or is a real proven fact. This explains so much. Also, the fact that Timaeus speaks in such a long, untruncated fashion is a reference to how Dirk and his bio-children, especially his ecto-daughter, Rose Lalonde, tend to speak in near-rambling monologues as well. Bladekind is Dirk's primary strife specibus with which he wields the unbreakable katana. 
How did Dirk and Bro even obtain this? Especially when you consider its origin as a zilly weapon. Powerful enough to crack meteors with ease, damage the beat mesa, and stave off god-level beings without alchemizations. The katana so far has only been wielded by a version of Dirk. Or, surprisingly, Roxy Lalonde, who removed the sword from the surface of Loaz and used it to kill the Condis. Despite its namesake, it has been broken, but only by Dave's Kaladvulk. Ironically, the real-world katana Dirk's is based on is actually really cheap and fragile. Dirk also wields fancy Santa kind, a self-referential callback to Hussey's Problem Sleuth webcomic. Able to calm the nerves of any nervous broad, fancy Santas in Problem Sleuth act similarly to pumpkins, chaotically appearing and disappearing throughout the story. On top of that, with the comic's object duality glitch, one of the items Death Scythe can turn into is a fancy Santa, making it a deadly weapon. In Homestuck, when the Alpha Kids are in trickster mode, they make a load of Zilly Santas, which Hussey says, in comparison to the other Zilly weapons, is arguably the most powerful of them all. It's even able to reflect the crowbar in Sound Page Collide. You know, the same crowbar that can destroy the god tier clocks. Dirk's final specibus is Puppet Kind. We'll get to you one day, you little punk. And now it's time to explore the alternate universe. I just want to say... I love Fandom Bro. Fandom Bro is the best. Canon Bro, on the other hand... As Guardians go, Beta Dirk Strider... Something is clearly wrong. We don't know much about how Bro was raised, except for the fact that he had his little cow since he fell to Earth, about 30-something years before 413, 2009. Hmm. That means Bro was somewhere between 17 and 26 years old when he adopted Dave. Neat. To our limited knowledge, Bro has had no contact with the Beta Universe versions of his friends, not even when entering the medium. Because of this, he also would have no idea or be connected to Jake's Skyanet company that produced the technology that's keeping track of all the Spurb Meteors and the Hero Children. But apparently, Bro knows more than he's letting on, since he not only arrived to Dave's crater, prepared with a spare pair of baby-sized shades. But when he entered the medium, he travels to the Beat Mesa and stabs the surface with his katana during his battle with Jack Noir. This fact becomes more disturbing when you remember that Lord English can only enter a universe after it's been scratched. So why would Bro try to scratch the Mesa? Keep in mind that the Beat Mesa was not Bro's first stop. When Rose throws Dave's dream little Cal out the window, Bro's rocket board mysteriously catches little Cal and sends him for a ride that guarantees the puppet's safe arrival to Earth. And guarantees sheer chaos because the fandom made charts just to keep track of the whereabouts of this paradoxical cursed Juju. Considering that the souls that Little Cal hosts have possessed and corrupted people during the comic's run, it's safe to assume that Beta Dirk, having owned Little Cal for so many years, has been influenced by the dark power of the puppet as well. This would explain his treatment of Dave. As it is, Bro is the only human guardian to literally attack his charge, ambushing Dave on the daily with puppets disturbing messages, comics, and literal swords. And basically never stocking the house with food. The fridge is filled with swords, man! Dave literally said that he learned what a fridge was really used for from the movies. <laughs> Dave was so excited to find an unrefrigerated bottle of apple juice hidden in his closet that he had to message his friends about it. Oh. 
Andrew Hussey considers Bro's treatment of Dave as abuse. And so do I. And so does Dave, calling his bro a robot and a sociopath who treated parenting like some sick game. Dave didn't even feel too terrible when mourning Bro, after spending time with his friends on the meteor, realizing what humanity felt like, it's an understatement that Dave was not excited to reunite with the younger version of his bro, but ended up bonding with him right before Soundpage Collide. And then Dave killed him! Pretty sure Freud would have something to say about overpowering an abusive father figure and breaking their phallic symbol. But that's just speculation on my part! As can be expected of Striderkin, Dirk is connected to a bird. Where Dave has crows, Dirk has seagulls, due to him essentially being an island in a giant ocean. Hmm, that could be symbolic. Dirk even has the signature Strider bird-shaped hair. In fact, Phil, would you call this a flock of seagulls haircut? Like most of the cast, Dirk has several songs from the Homestuck Bandcamp albums. Many of Dirk's songs are some of my favorites. Stress, Despot, Moonsetter. Bloody Moonsetter, son! Yes! Give me strings, chiptunes, and moog. However, many of Dirk's more recognizable show-stopping sound page songs, like Unite Synchronization or Time on My Side from Prince of Heart Rise Up, were originally Dave's, as you can see from the album art. I mean, Dirk is pretty obsessed with his version of Dave's exploits. He did get a Hella Jeff tattoo on his shoulder, in honor of his sweet bro. Of all the Earth kids, Dirk is closest in personality to Equius, with towels littered around his apartment, being strong, being close friends with a rogue who has the void aspect, and having a love of robots and horses. It's mentioned that Dirk genuinely likes Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. She is the element of loyalty, a fan of their world's equivalent of Indiana Jones, and arguably is the fastest Pegasus in all of Equestria. Or Hussey just wanted the rainbow horse because Dirk's gay. Speaking of the author, Hussey stated that Dirk's universally hated on shades are a reference to the shades belonging to Kamina from Gurren Lagann. Retroactively. Curse anime for being so attributable. Ironically, Kamina wields a giant sword, fights hostile robot armies, dies heroically, and is called bro by a kid who is not his literal brother. YouTube is listening after the bro strider section. You're gonna have to censor this part. How? Pick words that sound close but are also ridiculous. Done. Dirk has demonetized more than any of the characters in Homestuck. Five times canonically. Almost six. Three of them were self-inflicted, two of which were... Let's call them... Dirkapitations. Let's not even talk about... Ca <laughs> candy! <laughs> <clears throat> because of his penchant for Suicune, fans jokingly depicted Dirk deciding that the only way to escape from an unwanted situation was through the removal of his own head. Dirkapitation has since been added as an inside joke within the comic itself, with John's pinata in the credits and several jokes in the epilogues. What was that? It's possibly even in Hive Swap with the head of a cool cat seen chilling suspiciously above a katana in Jake Harley's trophy room. Keep in mind that I'm not even including the time that Dirk tried to demonetize A.R., who is essentially a clone of his 13-year-old brain, so it was like he was literally trying to break himself. Self-loathing is a big part of Dirk's story arc. He's fairly obsessed with himself, which works with his troll zodiac sign of Saggio, the ego. Dirk Strider is the Prince of Heart. With Prince being synonymous with Destroyer, and Heart synonymous with the Soul, Dirk is literally the Destroyer of Souls, able to rip souls from their bodies. A tempting power if it got out of hand, 
especially considering that the Prince class is most likely to crop villains, who are seemingly devoid of their aspect. But we're lucky that Dirk was the exception to this case. <sighs> but it's speculated that Prince's possibly provide room for creation where the destroyed aspect once was. But I think we'll have to wait and be patient to see if that's confirmed or not. Also, as fairy tales teach us, sleeping princesses are awakened by a kiss by a dashing prince. Which Dirk does by kissing both of his female co-players. While Dirk himself is awakened by a kiss from Jake. Hart was briefly touched upon in Nepeta's episode, but Dirk being an active player represents the aspect more typically than the cat troll did. Though Dirk did do his fair amount of ship art commissions for Caliborn. The Zodiac quiz says that ironically, Hart players have a deep focus on their own mind and their identity to the point of being self-absorbed, that every decision and action they make goes toward building a coherent narrative of their own story. At best, they're competent, imaginative, and steady, but at their worst, they can be overbearing, inflexible, and cold. If a player doesn't get a grasp on who they are, or a sense of their role as their story's protagonist, well, I assume things get really grim. Calliope stated that heart players can splinter their personality, and Dirk demonstrates this with not two, or even three, but up to five literal versions of himself. Including his wake and dream selves, AR, a robot double, and a brain ghost Dirk that dwells in Jake's dreams and occasionally becomes real. As Dirk has admitted, he has serious self-hatred issues, apologizing for even his alternative self's actions, and despairing at the fact that he surrounded himself with versions of himself like AR, who he sees as tormentors. In a meta sense, eyes are said to be the windows of the soul, and striders tend to cover their eyes with dark shades, hiding behind a facade of Cool Kid. And the last fridge stuck fact for Dirk Strider is... I think the reason you like Dirk so much is because you have a few things in common. I can see that. I mean, we both draw with a tablet. Ahem. Surely you can think of another thing you two share? We both like... boys? Are you sure that you can't think of one last thing? I'm just joking! Of course I wouldn't forget about you, Phil. Or AR. Ha ha. You almost had me there. I love you. My animus, my opposite, my dude bro home slice bread slice dog. Now you're just overdoing it. Soon, Dere. AR, or Little Hal, is Dirk's trusty artificial intelligence autoresponder, responding to Dirk's messages anytime Dirk is zoning out in his apartment. As a somewhat clone of his creator, AR responds to the Alpha Kids like how a 13-year-old Dirk would have, including creating his own autoresponder. Most are initially annoyed to run into AR since he poses as Dirk until the facade is detected. Once discovered, Jane likes to talk to him, and AR takes a certain amount of pride when she goes Crocker evil. Jake can't stand him, often telling him to put the real guy on especially due to AR making obscure pop culture references at him. Lastly, Roxy, when she was younger, used to roleplay with the robot, to a certain point that AR may have actually developed romantic feelings for her. AR's little Hal name comes from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. An AI named Hal 9000 was the system in control of a large spaceship. His appearance is sometimes seen in the reflection of Dirk's glasses, to hammer home the joke, including the reference that Little Hal is over 9,000. Hal 9000 later turned into an antagonist due to a malfunction caused by paradoxical orders, to the point that he reasoned that killing the ship's crew would still complete the ultimate mission, uttering the famous line, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Though Little Hal addresses this to Dirk instead. But Dave is ironically Dirk's bro. 
What did HAL 9000 keep a secret? According to the novel, aliens exist, but NASA wanted to keep that hidden from the crew until they met them at their destination. Why? All humans are antpint xenophobes. I'd wink, but I only have one eye. Welcome to the dark side, Phil. Thank you guys so much for watching this Fridge Stuck episode for Dirk Strider. I hope you enjoyed. Any facts I missed? Do you have a character or a concept that you'd like to see? Leave it down in a comment below and it might end up on the show someday. Be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend, and check out my Patreon. And I will see you all next time. Bye! This is how to be a heartbreaker. Hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Gerald Thomas and Bleed Red.